Hey, yo, what's up, what's up, guys? Zaid here with another episode of Zaid's Experience. Today, I wanted to make a quick little video. I've been working on a lot of stuff lately, and I've been super, super busy, which is why I haven't posted at least one video this week. But be sure that I will be bringing a lot more content to you guys pretty soon. So I just wanted to give you guys a quick update as to how the carnivore diet is going. It's been going great. It's been going as expected. Everything's been um, progressing properly. Again, sleep has been going great. Um, actually, it's been going better. I've been trying out some meditation along with the whole carnivore diet, and I think it's really taken everything to a completely different level, which I really, really like. Also, along with defining my exact purpose of why I'm doing my carnivore diet, that has also really, really helped. For me, the main purpose is to put on a little bit more muscle mass and keep strength as opposed to losing a lot of weight. And so I kinda can't wait to show you guys the results that I've been taking on my week to week photos with each passing week. So it's it's gonna be pretty cool to show you guys like an, an entire set throughout the whole 90 days of progress. So if you guys haven't seen my video on how to kind of pick or kind of have a general some general guidelines as to what you want to do with your carnivore diet um, go ahead and click on the card that I'm gonna provide up here which links you straight up to one of my videos check that out and it'll give you a better idea weight loss on the other hand has stopped it really has gone to a complete halt and this has been mainly because I've been eating a lot more the reason I've been eating a lot more is I've been given the go, the green light from my therapist to start working out a little bit more, a little bit harder, a lot more intense deadlifts and stuff like that, but just really light, just really, you know, do a little bit more sets, lower weight, that kind of thing. That's what I've gotten the green light for. So I've been doing a lot more of that. And what seems to be happening is I've been getting insanely hungry. And the reason for it is my body just wants to put on mass. It just wants to do that. I know a lot of people have a really hard time putting mass. My body has no problem. It has all the problem in the world though, trying to lose some some mass. Literally in the past couple of weeks, I think I've been, I've been putting on quite a bit of muscle mass. So this is still in the testing phases, but you will see on those before and after pictures, a really cool progress of like me kind of looking a little bit, um, not flimsy, but not too toned. And then you'll see a progress from like one to two weeks where everything just starts toning down quite a bit. I mean, like my, my arms have been getting bigger. My traps are starting to get huge again. Uh, I have no complaints there. So this carnivore diet has been treating me pretty well. Kind of do see me losing a little bit of weight here and there, but it's more of a visible thing than actually seeing it on the scale, which I think is something that you guys should not pay to like pay as much attention to. I think a lot of people get really, really caught up in what the scale actually says versus what you guys see in the mirror. And I think that's one of the most important things. I also stopped running for the next two weeks at least. Um, some knee issues started to arise again on my right knee, which is why I kind of have my um, my Incrediware knee sleeve. <laughs> but nothing to worry about. I went to my therapist as well for that side and we've destroyed every single muscle on my leg. She took an entire hour just on one leg. There was a lot of tight spots and this has been due to me like not keeping up as much as I would like to. And I've also had some other issues like bursitis that I've mentioned in the channel a long time ago. So this is kind of like an uptake. It's gonna happen like at least once a year. So I, it was expected. So it's nothing bad. I just need to give it a rest for like two weeks and we should be good to go. But other than that, everything's been running super smoothly. The other thing that I wanted to mention to you guys is I'm gonna buy a pig. I know that sounds a little bit uh, awkward, but I'll explain to you guys more in an upcoming video, but one of the main reasons why I wanted to buy a pig is to have a little bit of extra meat. Sometimes buying red meat can get a little bit expensive, and I think pork, if properly sourced and you know where it comes from and you know raised, treated, and all that, I think it can be a great asset to this carnivore diet or any diet in general. I think pork has a very negative connotation on people's diets just because it's um, really high on fat, but I think it's something that we can really benefit from if we know how to source it properly. So more on that on uh, the next video actually. 
I'm also gonna be heading over to Yosemite pretty soon. I've been dreaming about going to Yosemite for years. I think it's been one of my destinations on my bucket list and I have just not gone around to doing it for whatever the reason. Even though I just live like six hours away from the place, I just haven't been able to go up there for, again, one or another reason but i'm finally gonna do it and i'm gonna head over next week and so i'm super stoked to show you guys so i'm gonna be recording a bunch of the stuff over there uh what i'm gonna be taking on my trip to survive as a carnivore up there because i'm still doing the challenge up there it's not like i'm going up to yosemite and i'm just throwing everything out the window no i'm still gonna be going around i'm still gonna be getting my meat but i'm gonna be taking a lot of the meat and i'm gonna show you guys how i'm gonna pack it what i'm gonna be packing in what i'm gonna be taking it that way it survives the trip which is six hours it's not bad just about any cool will get you through it and some of the stuff that i'm gonna be taking on my hike which is what I wanted to show you guys today. as a recipe on how to do beef jerky. It's super, super simple. The reason why I wanted to show you guys how to do beef jerky is because a lot of people are kind of terrified of doing it. They're like, I need to buy a dehydrator. I need to get a bunch of stuff for my kitchen. It takes up a lot of electricity. And It's super simple, guys. Literally, all you need to do is four steps. And it's four super simple steps. First, you gotta get your meat, whatever meat that you're gonna get. I recommend a leaner cut of steak. London broil is awesome, top sirloin is awesome, sirloin tips, flank steak is another one, rump, and many, many others that are just kind of cheaper cuts of meat that are a lot tougher. So make sure you buy some high quality meat and you're good to go. Now your next step is just to cut these pieces of steak. The way I like to cut them is to Cut them about a quarter inch, not too thick and not too thin either because these are gonna dehydrate so they're gonna release a lot of water and it's gonna be expelled and all that and so you're gonna be left with something very, very thin. The reason why I like to keep them a little bit thicker is because I like to chew on it enough that I don't have to chew my jaw because that's the other thing. If you keep them thick enough, they'll keep a little bit of moisture in them or just a little bit of, they'll become a little bit more soft as opposed to the beef jerky you get in like a 7-Eleven or an AMPM where your, your jaw just, it sucks. Like for me, I remember I could not um, eat beef jerky if I was gonna play my trombone. For me, I like having a little bit thicker, but that's just personal preference. Next step, salt and pepper. That's all beef jerky needs, salt and pepper. A lot of people like to do special brines. They like to do a bunch of stuff. Just put, I like just to put salt and pepper. You guys can put whatever you guys like, but I think salt and pepper is more than enough, especially if it's super high quality salt or pepper. This is where you splurge, or at least this is where I splurge. Next step. Now you just need a baking sheet with a little rack that has those metal meshes on top of them. That way the air circulates through the bottom and through the top and it cooks evenly. One thing you can do to make cleaning a lot easier is put a piece of foil at the bottom of that mesh. That way when you remove the beef jerky from the oven, you just remove the piece of foil and the sheet's perfectly clean. And all you need to clean is probably that metal mesh and that's about it. Now that you slapped your beef jerky on top of the metal mesh, make sure you preheat your oven at 170 degrees. 170 degrees I know is a super low setting and some ovens don't even have it, but 200 will, will still work. As you get more experience on making beef jerky, you'll know exactly what you guys like. I like to do it at 200 or 170, either one is fine. And now all you do is you put it into the oven and leave it for four to five hours and you're done. As simple as that guys, four to five hours and you're good. And now you have like a pound and a half of beef jerky that you can take just about anywhere. And trust me, it'll taste way better than anything you have tried in any of the markets. Oh. Look at that guys. It doesn't matter where it comes from. Homemade stuff always tastes better than store-bought stuff. Trust me on this one. The reason why I wanted to tell you about this recipe is because a lot of people I know tell me, hey, what can I take on a trip? What is something that you travel with? Do you just um, buy stuff at the store? Sometimes I make my own beef jerky and I just take it in a, in a Ziploc bag and 
it's perfectly fine. For this Yosemite trip, I'm gonna be showing you guys how I'm gonna be taking about five pounds of beef jerky. I'm only going up there for like three three days, but I'm gonna be taking a bunch of beef jerky. I enjoy really just taking it on hikes. I enjoy just, it's the perfect snack on the go. So I hope you guys like this little quick tip. And like I said, I didn't, I don't wanna make this video too long. And once again, sorry for being a little MIA right now. It's just, there's been a lot going on. I've been updating my website and there's a bunch of little projects that I got going around, kind of coordinating everything so that we can record how they actually take apart the pig, which is one of, one of the other surprises that I wanted to show you. If, if you guys have ever wondered how to butcher a pig, stick around for the next couple of videos and I'll show you guys how that gets done. But in any case, guys, thanks for joining me on another episode of Sage Experience. If you like this video, please comment, like, and subscribe. You guys know the deal. Push that notification button if you guys haven't already done so. That way you guys get notified every time I come up with a video such as this. I like to travel a lot guys, so you will be seeing me do a little bit more of the travel things and I'll try to keep it as carnivore as possible. So you will definitely find both of those things in this channel. Both me traveling the world and being as carnivore as I can while doing it. Also a little coffee adventure every now and then. But that is it for today guys. Thanks for joining me. Zay out. Peace.